Hello and welcome to my video about decals within Unreal Engine 5. Today we're going to be talking about how to place decals, how to make custom decal materials and all of the other options and optimizations that come along with decals. We're also going to be talking about the downsides of using decals and what the alternatives can be. So without any further ado, let's get stuck straight into it. So the first thing that we will want to do is to get a decal actor. Now, a decal actor is just an actor that contains a decal component. So you can use decal component as part of, you know, one of your custom actors and whatnot. Now, first thing you'll notice is that this is looking quite terrible. It's all stretched out. That's because by default, the decal is going to be facing upwards. So let's just rotate this bad boy um, and whoop. Like that. And you can see that we're printing something to any mesh in our scene that is set to receive decals. Now, by itself, this is kind of useless. This isn't really doing anything. It's just making everything look, you know, a, a dark gunmetal green. So what you will want to do is to make a new material. Right click material. Then we're going to double click on this material and we're gonna turn it into a decal material. Now, the way we do that is we go to material domain and we're gonna turn it into a deferred decal. Bam, we get an error straight away. Using deferred decal domain can only use blend modes, translucent, alpha composite or modulate. So we are going to go to blend mode. We're gonna to go to translucent and you can see that we have all of our outputs back. So let's experiment and just get, I don't know, red and put red into the base color. Hit save, close, and let's go click on our decal actor. And we're just going to drag our material into the decal material over here. You can see, bam, everything is very red, very cool. It's doing exactly what we asked it to. Now, again, this is quite useless. So what you may want to do is to mask this out using, you know, like an alpha texture of some sort. Let's just do, you know, something really common. You know, game designers love blood. They love blood and guts and so do gamers, you know, games make people violent, etc., etc. So let's grab a texture. Uh, I'm just going to find one of mine called explosion decal texture and it is going to go into the opacity. And now we can see that this decal is blending into the thing that it is projected onto. We could make this, you know, a bit more convincing by using a method called height lerping, where we get a transition value. So we're just going to do a parameter called opacity. And we're going to subtract one from the texture. Then we're also going to multiply our transition phase by two. We're going to add them together and apply some contrast. Cheap contrast. Bam, bam. We'll put this at like, I don't know, five or something and put that into the opacity. So now we have a really hard edged uh, blood splatter thing um, when, you know, when it isn't zero. Uh, now this is going to come in handy later on because we can actually make decals automatically fade in and out if we're using the, the decal actor. Aside from just outputting a color value to print to, you know, any other mesh, decals can also send through normals, metallic roughness, specular, emissive. So if we just go to our normal and we put in 001, which is just an outward facing normal. You can see that it is overriding the normals of the thing that it's on. So the normals here are completely flat and you know, the wall has its, its usual normal textures. The other things we can change are the specular and the roughness. We can put the roughness down to zero. And let's also put the, the metallic up to, I don't know, one or something. Blood is very metallic. It's got lots of iron in it. And now you can see that this is actually reacting to the light, uh, you know, in terms of its specularity and its roughness, different than the thing that it's been placed on. We might want to not affect the base color and only, you know, maybe we want something to look uh, wet or like, you know, damp or something. Um, so we can just take out the base color and our wall will use the same color uh, you know, as it usually would. 
but now we've just changed the specular and the roughness of the wall. So decals can be very powerful when it comes to, you know, doing like graffiti and grunge textures, adding extra little details to, you know, a city or a landscape by just adding extra little bits that aren't actually a part of the underlying materials, you know, material. But they do come with one significant downside, and that is that each decal that is on screen is one draw call. Now, the keen-eyed among you may have noticed down here, we have a bunch of settings for the decal actor. I believe these are actually a part of the decal component. We have something called sort order. We have the fade screen size. We have the fade start delay, fade duration, fade in duration, fade in start delay, and destroy owner after fade. Uh, we also have the decal size in here, but usually you'll just be, you know, doing it manually um, with the actual like scale of the actor and whatnot. There's also a decal color option, which isn't actually going to do anything uh, unless you specify in the material, the decal color node. Uh, this is very similar to how particles sort of interface with their own materials. Now, the more important of those red nodes is the decal lifetime opacity. So this will actually automatically fade in and fade out the, the decal component if you've set, you know, a, a lifetime fade, you know, those options that we just went through before. So we can multiply our opacity, you know, that we set up before. Multiply, bam, put that into here and hit save. If we just set the fade in start duration to 0.01, because there is a, a bug, it seems, if it's set to zero, it will default to 0 0.1 and it will also not fade out properly, but just yeah, you get the point. Uh, if we hit simulate or play, then you'll see that this will just fade out on its own. We don't have to touch it. And then after it's finished, we've set it to 10 seconds, it should yeet itself from existence. There it goes. I didn't even, I didn't touch it. No hands, no hands. So this can be really handy if, you know, you've got like a like gunshot bullet holes and stuff. Uh, you just want to shoot them around everywhere. You just want them to delete themselves after a certain period of time. Uh, because again, the more decals that you have at any given time on screen, the more performance it's going to cost because each one of them is going to have to get drawn to the debuffer each frame. If, if you've been around this channel long enough, you'll know that draw calls are our arch nemesis. Now, someone in my chat did just remind me that the decal color node can actually be used to transfer data from Niagara uh, into a decal material. So in Niagara, uh, we'll cover this in a separate video, but you can natively use decals in a Niagara system. So you could have like little particles flying off everywhere. And then on collision, they spawn a Niagara decal. And one of the only ways that you can pass in custom data to those Niagara decals is with the decal color uh, input. So you don't necessarily have to use this for, you know, R, G and B color. You can just be like, okay, let's use the R to do I don't know, the amount that the fire embers are glowing when they spawn the decals. And then the alpha can be the opacity. I'm pretty sure the decal lifetime opacity still works in the Niagara decals, but you can basically just use these for any arbitrary values that you need to pass into your materials. So if you've watched my particles and materials video, Niagara materials, something, something, this would essentially replace the dynamic Param node for your Niagara decals. Right, so let's talk about how do we stop decals from appearing in places that we don't want them. Now you might think, oh, well surely there's like decal channels or something, uh, but unfortunately there is only one decal channel, which is the, the debuffer. We're gonna talk about the debuffer in a follow-up video, but we can disable the use of decals in 
two places and two places only. One of them is in the mesh itself. So the primitive that's in the world, we can go to receives decals. We can turn it off. So that's just going to exclude this mesh from the debuffer uh, pass. But we can also exclude the material of the mesh from receiving decals. So if we go into my, you know, my props material and we look over on the right hand side. Oh, sorry. The, on, <laughs> we look over on my right hand side underneath my, my big face. We can search up decal and we have the decal response debuffer. So this is just the default decal response. Uh, and we have a few options here. We can say none. So you can see that now the decal has disappeared completely from this material, even though the mesh is set to receive decals. Uh, and we can also just change it to just color, just color and normal, just color and roughness, blah, 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 blah. So if I just set color only, then you'll see that our shiny effects from before isn't going to be there. And it's just going to use the underlying materials roughness and specular and metallic uh, you know values in the output so let's set this back to color normal roughness for the time being and we're good to go now another thing about decals being in places that you don't want them to be uh, is to do with the actual decal projection box so if i put a another mesh right behind this one and we make this decal projection box really large, then you can see that it isn't exclusive to the thing that it hits first. So decals go through stuff. Um, and so what you'll need to do, you know, if you're doing level design and whatnot, you can just make this really, really thin um, so that, you know, it only sits right on the edge of the wall that you want it on. Um, you can see in this case, I've set it to be like giga thin. There we go. Now, you will probably want to disable decals on all of your characters because, you know, if a character then walks up to this wall, they're just going to get like a face full of, you know, this shiny red fluid, which is going to kind of look weird because then it's just going to immediately disappear when the character moves away from the wall. And that brings us to the alternatives for decals. So one of the main downsides of decals is the, the draw call cost uh, and also the sort of uncontrollability of, you know, what is interacting with them and kind of how they're projected and how they're placed uh, and all that kind of stuff. So one of the most common alternatives to decals in terms of level design on your static meshes and whatnot is to use vertex paint. So this moss and this, you know, broken stone texture, uh, these are not decals. These are actually a result of vertex painting. If we go to mesh paint, we can, you know, blah, 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 blah. Now the downside of vertex paint is that it needs to be predefined in the material itself. So we wouldn't be able to you know, have moss and stone and blood and, you know, two other effects because we only have the RGB and A channels to use as data to lerp between, you know, a set of predetermined effects. Whereas something like a decal, you know, we could put um, like a graffiti tag on this wall and the wall doesn't need to know anything about that graffiti tag in its own material. Now, another benefit that decals have over vertex paint uh, is that decals are rendered on a pixel level. So even though this part of our, you know, our wall mesh is very low poly, uh, we still get the, the pixel details uh, from the decal. Uh, whereas something like vertex paint, we're limited by the density of, you guessed it, the vertexes. Now, obviously, that can be broken up by, you know, height lerps and, you know, other sort of material blending effects. But you won't be able to, you know, paint again, like a, a, someone's signature on a wall using only vertex paint. Now, another advantage that decals have over most other forms of, you know, 
editing individual meshes and stuff, uh, is that they are very easy to just spawn at runtime. So you can just make changes at runtime without having to, you know, have a, a plugin or an extension that can do runtime vertex painting. Uh, you don't have to set up, you know, a render target for a mesh that gets hit and that kind of thing. Decals are just very globally available. That's sort of the main thing that decals have going for them is that they are just very simple and easy to use. Something, something, line trace, uh, line trace by channel. You know, just imagine this is your, your gunshot or something. Uh, get the output, break that, get the location. Uh, we're going to spawn, I think you can just spawn a, yeah, a decal at location. Um, it already has it kind of all set up, ready to go. We do this. The size is whatever you wanted the size to be. I don't know, 100, 100, 100. Location. Uh, the rotation, I believe, is the impact normal. I think it's rotation from X. Don't, don't quote me on this. This is just a very general, you know, sort of doodad. You might just have to play around with what you get the rotation from in the uh, in the decal. But then just select your decal material, test decal, uh, lifespan, 10 seconds. If you wanted to change any of those other settings at runtime, you can do it here where it would be like fade, you know, fade duration, fade out, fade screen size, blah, 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 blah. And that would just spawn a decal at location. So to summarize, decals, they are very flexible. You can spawn a lot of them super, super easy. They're very easy to use. Uh, you can choose which channels of the materials they override. You can use them to just alter the color of something, uh, just the normals of something, just the, you know, roughness and specular of something. Using the decal actor or the decal component, you have a bunch of parameters that will automatically fade it in and out and also delete the decal. So they're very easy to manage. And you can also use the inbuilt material nodes, the decal color and the decal lifetime opacity nodes, just to make them interface with materials in specific ways, especially if you're using Niagara decals, which we will talk about in a future video. That's about all there is to know. That's sort of the basics about decals in Unreal 5. If you did enjoy the video or learn something new, make sure that you are subscribed because there are plenty more videos to come. And a big shout out to all of the patrons who support the channel for as little as $1 per month. You guys are very, very cool. I, I really appreciate all the support. And with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.